As members of a team of transportation professionals providing services to the public, employees are responsible for ensuring a safe, comfortable, and efficient ride for our passengers. While this is a challenge, we have numerous resources available to help us meet our responsibility. Well-maintained vehicles, safety equipment, policies and procedures, and thorough and effective training are all tools used to help us succeed. While each of these resources is important, the most valuable resource we have is each other. In order to take full advantage of the support we can provide each other, efficient communication is essential. The communication tool we use is a radio system. During the course of this video, we will explain the role of the radio in our daily operation, examine different types of radios, discuss the importance of professional radio procedures, and explore some of the common causes of poor communication. Our radio system is the communications link between the dispatch center and our vehicles. Through the use of the radio, vehicle operators receive information concerning stops and dispatchers are able to monitor vehicle status. Dispatchers are also able to assist vehicle operators with directions, provide information concerning road and traffic conditions, and transmit safety messages. In addition, the radio system is used to provide communications during emergency situations. Vehicle accidents, passenger medical emergencies, unruly passengers, and fires are all events in which your radio may be your only link to assistance. While there are many different styles of radios, they generally share several common characteristics. Your radio system will be comprised of two parts the base station and the mobile equipment. The base station is located in the dispatch office and consists of a console for power, a microphone for transmitting, and an antenna. The mobile equipment is basically the same for all vehicles and is designed for safe operation when driving. Mobile equipment consists of the console, a palm mic or handset, a speaker, and an antenna. The console provides power. It has a control for volume and a squelch control for eliminating static. The palm mic or handset is used to transmit messages. A transmit button is located on the mic. The speaker is for receiving transmissions and the antenna is for receiving and transmitting the radio signal. Radio systems are either simplex or duplex. On a simplex system, one channel is shared by both dispatch and the mobile units. Because of the shared nature of the system, individual operators are able to hear all transmissions and even communicate between one another. While this is helpful in the sense that operators are able to share information, we must be careful not to clutter the channel when using a simplex system. A duplex system is one in which a separate channel is used for dispatch transmissions and mobile transmissions. Using a duplex system, vehicle operators are not able to hear each other's transmissions. In addition to the two types of systems, we operate on a variety of frequencies. This is generally dependent on the geographical area in which we operate. Frequencies can be high band, low band, 800 or 900. On some frequencies, we not only share the airtime amongst ourselves, but also with other agencies. Your radio system might also have several channels. Your trainer will provide you with specific details on the radio system frequency, channels, and hardware in use at your location. When you are ready to transmit a message, be sure that the channel is clear. The console usually has two light indicators. The red light indicates that someone is currently transmitting. The green light means that the channel is clear. If your console is mounted on a location that enables you to see the lights, you can use them to determine if the channel is clear for your transmission. If you cannot see the lights on your console, you must use another method of determining if the channel is clear. To help you know when the channel is clear, all transmissions by dispatch will end with the word clear. This is your cue that the channel is available. Press the transmit button and speak clearly. To listen, release the transmit button. If you share your radio frequency with other agencies, additional indicators may be in use to determine if the channel is clear. No matter what the specifics are of your radio system, constantly monitor the radio to ensure that you do not talk over other transmissions. 
We mentioned earlier that professional communication is an important part of our success. What do we mean by professional communication? Professional communication is efficient communication. The use of 10 codes, constant transmission monitoring, avoidance of clipping and dead air time, and speaking clearly are all part of professional communication. Let's take a closer look at these items. 10 codes are a series of numbers that take the place of words. For example, 1019 is a request for the operator to return to the base. 109 is a request for a repeat of the last transmission. By using 10 codes in place of words, we are able to minimize the amount of time we spend on the radio frequency, thereby keeping the channel clear for emergency use. On some frequencies, we are charged for each second of airtime. For this reason, it is extremely important to minimize time on the air. The use of 10 codes is an effective method of accomplishing this goal. Your trainer will provide you with a listing of the 10 codes used at your location. Your radio is your only link to the dispatch office from the vehicle. For this reason, it is important that you are able to hear all radio transmissions that occur during your shift. Your radio should not be a distraction. However, it should be kept at a volume that allows you to monitor transmissions while operating your vehicle in a safe manner. Clipping occurs when you begin speaking before you have pressed the transmit button or when the transmit button is released before the entire message has been delivered. When clipping occurs, your entire message is not heard by the other party. This leads to confusing, inefficient communication. When transmitting, be sure to press the transmit button before you begin to speak and be sure to complete your message before the button is released. A technique that may be helpful is to count to three in your mind after you have pressed the transmit button and before you begin to speak. This same technique can be used at the end of your transmission. After speaking, count to three to yourself again before releasing the transmit button. These pauses will ensure that you do not clip the beginning or end of your transmission. Dead air time occurs when a transmission is not ended properly. During dead air time, no other transmissions can be made. This totally incapacitates your communication system. After transmitting, be sure that you have released the transmit button. If possible, check your transmission light. If the light is red, you have not ended your transmission and dead air time occurs. By making sure that your transmit button is released after every transmission, you will avoid dead air time. The Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, assigns radio frequencies, issues radio licenses, and monitors the airwaves. Such regulations include unauthorized use, unlicensed repair, obscene, indecent, or profane language, transmission of unassigned call letters, false calls, fraudulent distress calls, unidentified communications, operation during a civil defense test, and transmission within 200 yards of posted blasting. In addition, dispatch must broadcast our call letters every 30 minutes. Failure to comply with these regulations can result in fines and or imprisonment. Your trainer will provide you with additional information regarding FCC regulations. If you are not able to receive a radio signal, check for the following problems. Is your unit turned on? Is the volume adjusted properly? Is the transmit button stuck? Are you on the correct channel? If all of these items have been checked and your radio is still not receiving a signal, it may need to be repaired. Contact dispatch by telephone and advise them of the problem. If your reception is unclear, you may be in what is known as a dead spot. Dead spots are areas where clear radio reception is not possible due to the terrain or tall buildings. Should you be in a dead spot, move the vehicle to where clear transmission is possible. This is usually only a matter of a few blocks. Radio frequencies are often shared. For this reason, it is important to plan your transmission before you start to speak. Use the 10 codes to minimize airtime. Respect the communication of others. When more than one person is transmitting, no one is able to communicate. The environment from which you are transmitting can affect your ability to communicate as well. Passenger and road noise can cause your message to be misunderstood or not even heard. 
take this into consideration when preparing to transmit a message. Your emotions can also have an effect on your ability to communicate. Control your emotions when transmitting on the radio. Remember, you are speaking on public airwaves. You must think clearly without the influence of emotions when communicating on the radio system. When transmitting over the radio, safety is your number one priority. Minimize transmitting while driving. If you receive information from the dispatcher while driving, wait until you can stop to write down the information. Put safety first. Radio communication is a team effort. Without cooperation between vehicle operators and dispatch, effective communication is not possible. Professional, efficient radio transmissions are an important element of our success. Professional radio communication is your responsibility and will make you more successful on the job.